Back in 2020, you first saw Nexa 3D on the show at CES, and now since then they've got a dental machine with dental resin, an SLS machine, and what you all had comments on, the zip. Now, of course, we're here to show you what you need to see. This is the zip. It's not fully assembled, and it's gonna be my job to put it together. And what's really cool, Nexa is allowing me to put it together while answering some of the questions you have about it. And the first question we're gonna answer is from Leon, who is asking about the ultra-fast speeds. And that's actually a really good question. So here's how the zip deals with that. First, we start with the light engine right there. It, the light engine itself is closer to the LCD, bringing more power to the, the LCD and it lets more light through. And then here's where the secret sauce is. This is the VAT, and this VAT is not using FEP. They call it Everlast, and it's a special interface layer that has more lubricity, which means that the parts can peel from it easier, which means the speeds can go faster. And Nexa calls that whole system the LSPC, or the Lubricant Sublayer Photo Curing. I like assembling things. The next question that I'm going to address with you is NFC. And I know this is not one of those things that a lot of people like to talk about, but it's really important for what Nexa 3D is trying to do with the zip and how it integrates into industrial environments. First, with any sort of resin machine, it's really good for you to be able to be able to sense the level of the resin because you have a resin canister loaded. And this is an ultrasonic sensor that sits in the back and will keep the resin level known so that if it ever has to add more from the container with the NFC, it can. And I'll put it in right now. Power tools and 3D printers, man. It's the way to be. <laughs> Sensor's not gonna work well unless I plug it in. And that's right back here. The VAT itself has the Everlast membrane and it has the magnetic attachments to hold it in place. So VATs themselves can contain multiple materials and it's not out of the question for a company to have multiple VATs with multiple materials. Because as you know, with any 3D printer, if you have one resin machine and you want to print a different resin material, you have to empty it out and you have to wipe it out and you have to clean it out and then you have to add the resin again. For an industrial environment or some place where you don't wanna to have to mess with things, where time is money, having multiple vats is essential for the workflow and that's why we're doing this here. This is where the resin cartridge goes in and this attaches right to the vat with there we go, these two screws. With NFC now, and now that you know there are multiple vats and multiple resin containers, when you put this in, the machine is not just going to recognize this, it's gonna think about it a little bit. And then it's gonna tell you if this is the right material compared to what's in the vat. It's also going to tell you if you have loaded the right material for the print that you're about to print. All of this is just to make it easier for someone such as you or me or anyone who might have less experience in 3D printing. And again, time is money. Excuse me. Next comment is from Koozie 3D and they've talked about being able to level the build plate. And that's really interesting because that's what I'm gonna talk about right now. This is the Z axis. That's a big ball screw right there. And it's got linear rails on either side. So what we're going to do is attach it to the machine. Here's the leveling sensor right here, and this is of course what interrupts it. So it's got two screws to put in, and before we attach the Z-axis, these screws have to be tightened down. Four big bolts go in from the bottom. Well, part of the reason we do this too is for the rigidity of the machine. I mean, I know we're talking about the leveling of the build plate, but at the same time, you have to remember repeatability. And in an industrial environment, having it, uh, having it stay level over many, many cycles is very important. So having a nice, robust Z-axis helps ensure that the build plate level will be consistent over use. From the factory, Nexa is going to calibrate the Z-axis. And with the rigidity of the machine, they know that this is then going to last for quite a few cycles. One of the things I wanna mention about this question last is the way the build plate attaches to the arm. So the mechanism or the latch is down, you can slide this on and then a quick flip up and it locks into place. The reason that this is important is because it lends itself to the reliability over time of the machine. When we talk about consumer-based resin 3D printing, usually the build plate is at the end of a, a ball head. 
and you have to bring the plate down to the, well, the surface and then tighten it up. And a lot of times it can be slightly skewed or over time, just from printing, it can shift just a little bit. This mechanism right here, this latch and the way it attaches ensures that this isn't going to move and it's going to retain that factory level setting. Of course, you know, out in the field, if something needs to change, it can be, but the goal for Nexa 3D is to have very minimal interactions with the machine as far as leveling. And so leveling from the factory should translate to many happy prints. For this next question from Dragonling, it's talking about the software that Nexa 3D is gonna use to power printing on the zip and while I do that I'm gonna put on the sides so with the software that Nexa 3d has for this machine there are going to be three different tiers and the first tier is absolutely free that tier is for people who just want to print stuff or if you don't know precisely the knowledge level of the user or if you want to enable multiple users to be able to use the machine with the most amount of success think of maker spaces colleges print service bureaus possibly, uh, anyone that wants to utilize the machine with the materials that Nexa 3D has validated will get access to the software for free. And any materials that are validated down the road will be included in the free version of the software. Get in the hole. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So while I put this on, I'm gonna tell you about the other two tiers that Nexa has in their software. The tier just after the basic free tier is something they call Pro. And the Pro tier is available for those who want to experiment with the resins. Now remember, Nexa is open, meaning they can validate the resins, and those validated resins are available in the free software version, but not everyone is going to want to use validated resins. And for those people, you have the pro tier of the software. That lets those people experiment and play with and test all sorts of resins, even the ones that aren't validated. Finally, Nexa has what they call the open tier. And this is no holds barred, full send. If you want to experiment with resins, it'll work. If you just want to hit print, it'll work. If you want to develop your own resins for validation and usage, that will work too. It's completely open and allows you full access to every single capability that this machine offers. The next question is from Iceman Modeler, and it's an age old question because it asks about open versus closed, and it asks why wouldn't you just get a fleet of like frozen Sonic Mini 4Ks or, or Elegoo Mars 2? Mars 2 Pros? It's a really good question, and it deserves an answer. So when we talk about printers like the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro or the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K, they're, they're decent machines, they're a few hundred dollars, and they really get people's feet wet in resin 3D printing, and that's great. But when you start talking about multiple users, uh, especially in environments where people don't have the same level of knowledge of 3D printing, when you need something that's more foolproof, when you need something that is reliable and consistent with print after print after print, when you need something that uses resins that can adhere to standards in automotive or aerospace, then you have to look to the industrial sector and that's where Nexa is going to work for you incredibly well. Look at that. Last, the door. <laughs> Look at that. The machine is together and I put this together. And in doing so, I learned a lot along the way. Plus, I was able to answer some of your questions. One of the things I learned along the way, though, I think is really interesting. The zip is a direct result of customer feedback to Nexa 3D. Nexa 3D offers larger machines. They've got the dental machines and they've got the SLS machines and they've got you know, massive machines. In fact, you saw it at CES, right? The people that have those machines wanted to take that industrial ability and reduce it in size so that engineers and print room operators and heck, anyone at a company can accomplish the same things but just on a smaller scale. So imagine a room full of large machines, but now one of these could sit on a desk 
or multiple desks or in a pod, Nexa 3D has created something that at the price point is now attractive to people and businesses who couldn't participate in their higher price point machines. Thank you, Nexa 3D, for letting us come by and uh, tear up your shop a little bit for a few hours. That was a lot of fun. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you. And as always, high five.